What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning back into the channel. In today's episode, we're going to be swapping a diesel in my 1968 Wheel Wars Charger 12. Now, if you guys watched the previous episodes on this, you know that I bought this tractor without an engine. And I was debating whether I want to go diesel or gas. Um, so I figured I already have a few gas-powered lawn tractors. So why not spend the money and get a 10 horsepower Yanmar cloned diesel engine here. Um, so... Um, this is one of the last ones I believe that was to be like ever shipped out from eBay because they discontinued the 10 horsepower model and they went to a 9. Um, it's probably the same engine, um, but it's black instead of red. So anyway, we have one of the last ones, um, probably in existence in America that was brand new, um, shipped out from eBay there. Um, so anyway, let's get to seeing if this thing will line up with my wheel horse. Um, or if we're gonna have to, you know, make a whole new engine plate there. Alright, so if we come over here to the garden tractor, we can see that somebody made a different plate because it's had a Honda GX390 in it before. Um, I never got it, but that's what the previous owner told me. It had a 13 horse Honda in it. Um, so this is actually a different engine plate than what it would have had from factory. This is actually, if you look under here, there's actually steel diamond plate, and as you can see, it's pretty thick there. Um, and someone did a really nice job welding it on as you can see these welds are pretty nice um, So we're gonna see but these these holes are kind of skeptical, but just by looking at it right now I don't think it's gonna line up, but uh, We will see because this engine is much bigger than a 13 horse Honda so guys so as you can see I got it in and it is absolute you guys don't really realize how big this engine is Until you're like picking it up and handling it um, compared to like a gas engine or the 12 horsepower uh, core that would have came in here factory this engine is significantly larger um, Just in all aspects. It's much taller and everything um, So we're gonna have to see here if we're gonna be able to clear our valve cover um, right here because this um, I can I can take this fuel tank off and the exhaust and we can figure something out with this uh, the air intake here um, But our valve cover obviously has to stay on there. So um, I Don't know. I really want to get this engine in here, but it's kind of tight um, but you know, I really want to go diesel on this thing. So uh, We're gonna figure out some way whether or not we have to jack everything up like the Dash here and the hood, but I'm gonna figure out some way to get this thing in here um, But it's not gonna be as simple as just sliding a like a predator in here or Honda um, To get this in here. We're gonna have to actually do a decent amount of modifications to get this thing in so start by removing this air box here and uh, See what else we have to remove so I tore the uh, air box off there and it's definitely more close to fitting, but our fuel tank is in the way, so uh, let's try to move this fuel tank. Um, see if we can get this torn off here um, and see what we got to do to get this um, out of the way. And then we're probably going to have to tear the exhaust off. It's going to be close, but anyway, I'm going to have to tear this exhaust off anyway because, as you can see, it's pointing right back here. And I want to put a chrome stack on this, so we got to tear this exhaust off, so let's get to it. Alright guys, so I got some steel for the motor mount plate there, um, so let's get to uh, cutting this one off. This one, I'm not looking too forward to cutting it, because as you can see, it's welded the whole way here on the frame, so I'm going to have to, uh, it's not going to be fun to cut this, and I'm going to have to weld cut here. I just want to cut off with an angle grinder, but let's get this thing pushed outside, because I don't want to throw sparks everywhere and catch this uh, shop on fire. So, get this thing pushed outside here, and uh, get to cutting. Here you got it out, and you can see... Get a better look at that motor mount there you see it's welded the pretty much the whole way you know you you weld it for like three inches stopped there for about a quarter inch and weld it again so i mean hey the only thing left to do is let's just get cutting all right guys so i got uh the frame all ground down all the old welds there and everything it's all nice and smooth um for our mating surface here um and don't worry about this we're welding a plate right over top of this uh so we can brace this frame up some more um, I don't think it will go anywhere. Um, also, it will be better for mounting the engine. Give us a stronger mount there. Um, so we're going to weld that up. Um, and I got a piece of plate cut right here. It's not the, not the straightest of cuts. Um, right here, this is where I had to cut it. Um, but when we weld it on, then we can grind it um, flush here with the frame. And it should be good. Um, so I'm just going to make sure when I have this right. And then I'm just going to weld the corners um, right here. So that way... Um, or plate you know that way if it's not good then all we have to do is cut the corners and not have to cut the whole plate around there 
um, which anyway it should be fine um, but until we get everything so it's pretty much gonna work um, I'm not gonna completely go around the whole plate there and weld that on but um, it should make it a lot better so anyway I gotta ground that in this paint on this plate here um, so that way we'll get a good um, weld um, penetration there and all that and the weld stick good um, and I also got to clean up the plate here on the frame because um, you can see there's still paint here and I'm not going to get a very good weld there so um, get to clean this frame up and I'll you know go weld this plate on I got the plate on just all the corners there welds definitely are not show quality but um, they're just temporary there and then we'll go by once the motors are all on and you know running um, we'll go grind those down and lay a nice quality weld on the sides there and everything and just try to make this plate um, nice um, so that way uh, if someone looks at it they you know and they don't really know charge 12 that well they're going to think it's factory uh, because the welds are good and all that so anyway um, what we got to do now is we got to drill holes in this plate to uh, mount the engine so I'm going to get the engine out here and I'm going to mark where I want to mount it so that way I can mark it straight and all that stuff so our belt's on and all that um, so get the engine out here and uh, hopefully this is the last time carrying this engine out to this plate and I can bolt it on see if it'll start because that engine is pretty heavy um, so let's get to bolting it on alright guys so you can see I got the engine um, is sitting there and there are bolts through it so I drilled the holes um, and I was able to bolt it down um, I took my time and measured everything out to make sure the engine was straight there and uh, make sure we got the holes in the right spot and we did um, these are grade 8 bolts um, with nylon locking nuts and then I have a washer under here there's also a lock washer on the bolt down there um, and then I have a washer here just to uh, help spread out the stress there on the holes um, of the block because this is cast aluminum um, so that's better and uh, we're also going to I'm going to need to uh, tighten these nuts down obviously um, but it's like 20 degrees out and uh, you know, it's so cold out um, that I just need to go inside and warm up. So we'll do this tomorrow morning. Um, and then hopefully see if we can get our starter tomorrow. So that will be in a separate video, the first start. But um, let's just get this thing prepped for the first startup so everything goes fine and our engine doesn't fall off the frame. So I'll see you guys tomorrow when we tighten these bolts up. Hey right, guys, so I got the engine all bolted on. Um, as you can see there with our nylon locking nuts so I got to put the uh, exhaust back on and the air box back on and then uh, we can put oil in it fuel hook up a battery and uh, see if we can get her to run so uh, just got to do a few things here and we should be able to fire it up here in the next hour I got the engine all put back together we got the air box on the exhaust the fuel tank on um, and as you can see this exhaust is definitely temporary because number one we're rubbing right here um, and number two it's pointing right back here and if we run this for a long time it'll probably heat this up and melt our wires and stuff like that don't worry this wiring um, this is what came on the tractor this is getting all ripped out um, when I rewire it and confirm this is all running um, so uh, now we're gonna put uh, shell Rotella 15w40 in I'm not exactly sure how much it takes I'm gonna estimate around a quart um, so we're just going to fill it up slowly and recheck every time and I'll tell you guys what it takes because I could not find anything on YouTube of what this engine takes so um, we're just going off of uh, Yanmar's the clone that this is supposed to be Yanmar um, engine so we'll go with that what that says and uh, for too much we can always drain some out or if it's too little we can always add some so um, take our time and get this filled up so it's to the correct amount. Alright guys, so you can see I got everything ready to go here. We are about ready to start. I got the battery rigged up there and everything. Um, I have not tried to turn it over yet, so we'll get the moment of truth in the next video. So that's going to be the end of this video um, where we got the engine all mounted in. Um, so next video, we're going to be doing the first start. So uh, you're going to want to stay tuned for that to see if this 10 horsepower Chinese Yanmar clone is actually going to start and run um, as well as expected or if it'll even start at all so we will see so catch you back next video